Hi everybody, I hope you're all well. Uh, this little video is all about the Cosmos, Cadence Cosmos. So again, I love to sample my stuff. I love to be able to say this happens and this happens so that when you get it, you get it home, you can play around with it and then tell me what happens with your experiments. Always remember that water-based products need to be with water-based products. Oil and water are always the best. But always think that if you've got a range of products, perhaps they're made to work with each other. Perhaps I could do this, could do this, change the colour, the texture, the surface. Cosmos is a great one for that because it's got a texture built into it. So Cosmos is resembles um, a terracotta. Now, when you're doing pottery or ceramics, it's known as grog. And grog is where you're able to see the particles. So instead of it being finely tuned and, and, and really uh, crushed down, little particles are left and it's called a grog. And it's a beautiful earthy feel. How can you get that in paint? Well, Cadence have. They've done it with these. There's abundance of colours, but I've picked colours that perhaps you may not choose I, I don't know whether they just i just they just sung to me so i thought i'm going to try them so i've got the brown and i've got the i have to be careful because the names are very different here got the cashmere so this matches with one of the other videos where i'm using a ca cashmere crackle and then we've got the let me this is ecru so it's an off-white we'd call it um, a titanium buff in paint um and then we've got the smoke grey now this one is a beautiful grey because you can add it to other colors and you get a tonal range which is beautiful tone is a grey so shade is adding black right highlight is white and tone is grey so you get the idea that shade is black tone is grey so i'm going to just show you the surf i keep you uh keep the foils on because they're made to keep this fresh, keep it out of the light um, and, and keep it in a, a cool, dark place. I tend to leave it on. If you take it off, you can actually put a tiny bit of water in the, not a lot in there and some tin foil and the humidity will build back up. It lasts longer. You can use it with other mediums, but today we're gonna try mixing it together on several surfaces. So I'm going to get, I've got some black there that I'm gonna use and I've got some acrylic black and I've got some turquoise just to show you how amazing the colours. I only use a little bit. I only pull them back a little bit because I just don't, knowing me, I'll flick them all over, but you know, I don't want them to dry out because the stunning effects you get with these, they get like, um, like a, a pure pottery. So I've got some to show you, but wait till you see them going. I'm just going to get ready with some paper. So I've got some wooden coasters. I've got some other coasters to show you. Um, and I'm going to go in with a, a same, it's same sort of brush that I normally use for my other mediums. Make sure it's dry. Again, the problem is people don't realise that adding water to all your products can create different effects and it changes the compound. So it's like weakening the binder. So try and get your paintbrushes nice and dry. If you can have one for each one, that's even better. I mean, I have loads, loads of them all over. So I'm going to keep this one for the white or the ecru. And then I've mixed these, so you need a cop, not a cocktail stick. You'd be there forever. With the end of your paintbrush or something, just do a quick stir, get them ready. Now, I've got these blank, so I'm just going to put them on. And honestly, the coverage is amazing. So I'll put in the light that, and you can hear it. You can almost hear it. Let me pick this up. You probably hear it. That's the grit in it. So you're getting that built-in texture. So all the things that you have to do, building texture and other stuff, you don't need to with this because it ends up like pottery. So I'm going to put a thin layer all the way around mine. And again, you can see I'm using it from the lid. I'm tending to sort of keep it closed. I know these are all little things like... Well, why are you telling me that? Well, it's a tip, a top tip. I'm not telling you how to do your work, but I'm just telling you how to get the best out of your products so that, you know, when we get hot or cold weather, that it won't change the, sub, you know, the substrate itself. So I've put a layer on, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my brush. I want another flat brush, if I can find one. 
and I tend to use whatever I can at hand and I'm going to go like an ombre so the next one I'm going to cover in is a little bit of the brown so tiny bit and I take a lot of it off and I'm just going to go really softly and I'm also I'm, I'm almost flicking but you can still hear you can still hear that wonderful dragging motion of the what I would call the grog so look at that blend look at that that's amazing but I'll show you something that's really thick in a minute and you'd think no way could that paint do that so I brought in now some an ombre to make it look like what we call a terracotta wash so this is like unglazed earthenware I'm going to use this brush for this I should really use another one and a tiny bit of the smoky grey and again take it off I'm leaving the colour on that's already on my brush because I want to make a darker version of that I absolutely love this so again we've got that beautiful Oh, and you can see the grit in it so again leave this to dry 20 minutes not even that I'm just saying in normal weather we're having quite a lot of heat at the moment so a little bit more brown and because I'm not adding water I'm not dispersing the colour all over so I'm able to do more of an ombre but if I mix the two together I get a beautiful green as well so there's one so I've got a wonderful ombre now that is so very different to what it looks like in the pots so now I'm just going to get some card and I'm going to show you how heavy it looks when you just paint it so here's a piece of card that ends up within minutes or seconds even I've got a little bit of brown on it but I'm not too worried because I like the texture so now that will become almost like terracotta so again, I put colour one way, get another brush, go back to my light one. Really, you should work light to dark, not dark to light. And then I'm just going to drag that over. And now I've got a beautiful ombre because it's still wet. And I'll put that on another piece so you can see. So that's where the two colours have merged into one. And I'm going to do a thicker one now so you can see that again. So then the thicker one, get another piece of card. I'm going to go. Now, if you don't want to clean your brush, you don't have to with water. You just make sure that you get plenty off on your paper. So now I'm just going to go in quite thick, just show you how this really does look like terracotta. So there we go. You can see the grit can actually hear it as well two little well a few swipes you can work this in um, because you won't alter the, the compound or structure but then I can show you that that when it's dry looks like pure terracotta so here's some I did just to show you how I would do it at home so we've got this one that's drying we've got the black and white one there or the gray sorry and then here I've done some more but I'll show you what I do at home. I'm just going to clean that brush because it needs it. So, as you can see, hopefully, I have numbers in the corner. There's one that I'm going to do now. And on the numbers, I this refers to the, the technique I've done. So here, can you hear that? It's amazing. And it takes other paints and colours, and I'll show you in a minute. So here's a turquoise. That has now been made into a cosmos by using the ecru on it. So I'll show you that. So I've wrote on the back, start one colour at one end, the other blob in the middle, very technical, blend each way into the middle, cosmos. So I like to write down what I do. Here, number two, I've just put like little patches on and blended them in. It looks like a, a landscape in oils. It looks brilliant. Um, and here I've put add cosmos one end, then the other dark colour opposite, then to blend. Now I'm using language that I understand. It might that don't sound right. Apply two colours each end, blend to the side. So 
a great idea, tip, is write them down. Just write them down on the back and then you've got that forever. And if you do it on your tags as well, you can tie your tags together. So then what I would do is put them all together with my little books like that. So let's look at this now. I did one. That's one. So two layers. Can you hear it? Now, this really, I shouldn't do this, but I have. I've got a little bit of wax to show you that if you've got a wax, that it works with that as well. So if you've got a pot, a plastic, anything, if you need to prime it, just make sure that you do first. But this is on paper, so you can make a tag with it, everything like that. But if I wanted to, I can now just allow little areas to pick up the grog, what we call the grog on it. So I've done that with my finger there. So now I'm going to get a flat brush and I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. You dip it in ever so lightly, take it off and then you just brush it in and you get a different effect with that. If you wanted to, you could go in with fine lines and really paint it on to make it look like dry brushing and these are all techniques so you can build up on that so that gives you a wonderful effect on pottery on anything what will it look like on this shall we try it so again I've let it dry and I'm just going to put a little bit around the edge now you can change the color you can do this any color you want I'm not going to go too mad, but I tend to just do the little edges. That bit is a little bit too damp at the moment. Even if it feels dry, it might be damp there. So you can see, I've got that in and I can even rub it in while it's wet and get it blended even more. So that's another one. Okay, so all these things. And before I go, the one last one just to show you. I've done it on canvas and you can build up the colour. Okay. So, sorry, I moved it too soon for you quick. Um, so you can see I've added underneath and then stencil through. And if you get to see one of the other ones, you'll see me do this. But then I just want to show you the final, final bits for this. It's really quick. It's really easy to do. And the, the art of this is to just play because from all these like little bits, we can get so many different techniques. And remember, if you want to build up a library of techniques that you forget, I do all the time, this is the best way of doing it. And perhaps if you keep an eye open, you'll see at highlight, we'll do a, a techniques based one like this that helps. So that's a little introduction to some cosmos and you'll see another video at some point where I go into it a little bit more. So thank you for your time. I hope that helps and I can't wait to see what you do. So bye for now. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all of our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.